<laughs> the Breakfast Club, bitches. Now, I've been called a lot in my 23 years, but Donkey of the Day is a new one. Yes, Donkey of the Day for Tuesday, April 2nd, goes to a 29-year-old man from Los Angeles named Eric Holder. He is the alleged suspect in the murder of the black man known as Nipsey Hussle. Um, by now, I know you have seen the surveillance video of the shooting on TMZ. The LAPD said Eric Holder walked up to the three men and fired a bunch of shots. If you've seen the video, you can see that for yourself. He committed this crime while Nipsey and two other men were standing outside his Marathon Clothing Company store on Slauson Avenue. Let's go to CBS LA for the report, please. This is the man the suspect wanted in the murder of Nipsey Hussle. Now, this is Eric Holder. He was last seen in a 2016 white four-door Chevy Cruze with California license plate 7R JD 742. Now, the streets are saying Eric Holder is a known informant and hater, and Nipsey simply didn't want him around his store. Nipsey asked him to leave, told him he couldn't be around, and Eric Holder snapped. He snapped because there's nothing more fragile on this planet than the male ego. All right, men cannot take rejection, and Nipsey telling his brother to beat it hurt his pride so much that he decided to come back and kill that man. I I'm not going to lie to y'all. The death of Nipsey Hussle hit a little different, okay? I'm not okay about this. I'm tired of hearing stories about humans killing other humans for absolutely nothing, and it really hits different when those humans are black men because what happened to Nipsey can happen to any of us at any given time, all right? Hearing that happen to Nipsey makes me question my own mortality in a very different way because if that happens to brothers like Nip, what hope do the rest of us have, all right? Nipsey was a father. He had a woman. He was a brother. He was a son, a grandson, a friend. He was a man who seemed to be doing everything the right way, all right? Nipsey was a made man for real. He released most of his music through his own label, so he had that independence that so many people want. He was in Investing in his own community. He bought back the block for real. He had that whole plaza on West Lawson Avenue where his marathon clothing store was. And he had plans to build a residential building in it with low income housing. All right. People don't even know that yet. All right. Nipsey opened a co working space in STEM Center in South LA called Vector 90, which was simply meant to be a connector of young people to Crenshaw to opportunities in Silicon Valley. Not to mention, Nipsey was killed a day before he was set to meet with the LAPD chief and police commissioner to discuss ways to slow down local violence. The irony of him being killed a day before this meeting. So Eric Holder, a brother from Nipsey's hood, a brother from that community who knew Nipsey and Nipsey knew him. That brother literally hurt the very person that God sent to help people just like him. We cut our nose off despite our face too often in our communities, and it's exhausting. It's very exhausting. It's sad. I'm disappointed, frustrated, and scared because it's not just Nipsey, okay? It happens way too many times to too many of us, all right? And it really makes you question whether or not we need to be frontline in our communities at all because it seems like when you make it, especially when you make it in some form of entertainment or athletics or anything that gives you some sort of celebrity or fame, you become a target, all right? Eric Holder is just the latest in a line of hurt people who hurt people, okay? A lot of brothers are simply in pain, and they just keep redistributing that pain to people who look just like them. But Eric Holder, you killing Nipsey not going to kill your trauma. If you are still alive right now, whatever you were going through before you killed Nipsey has been multiplied times 100. Now you got a whole nother set of problems, and that's why I'm so big on dealing with your mental health and going to therapy and getting to the root of our internal issues because, my brothers, we got to heal. If we don't heal, we just going to have another generation of trauma of passing itself off as culture, all right? And this is why I was telling y'all yesterday to stop with the conspiracy theories surrounding the good brother Nipsey Hussle. His family and friends didn't appreciate that at all, okay? Nipsey you know, didn't get killed because he was doing a documentary on Dr. CB. Nipsey got killed by a jealous, envious, hating-ass dude from his community who clearly already had some deep-rooted issues and a fragile ego. And he couldn't stand the rejection he received from Nipsey. Like, seriously. I want y'all to really think about this for a, sex and, for, for, a sex, for a second, okay? You think the government is going to get Nipsey killed for a documentary that's not even out yet? But that same government going to let thousands of videos of Dr. CB live on YouTube? If they would go so far as to kill Nipsey for that, why wouldn't they just call YouTube and say, take those down? Like, seriously, what's wrong with y'all that y'all believe that? But I'm not going to go back and forth with y'all about that because that's, a, that's just a distraction. And if we're sitting around pointing the finger at everyone else, then we're not dealing with what we need to be dealing with, and that's ourselves. And by the way, I'll play white devil's advocate with some of y'all and say, you know what? I believe you. It is a conspiracy. 
But what about all the other brothers who got shot and killed in L.A. this weekend? What about the brothers getting shot and killed in Philly, in Chicago, in Jersey, in Atlanta? Are those conspiracies, too? We act like we don't see this happen to our people all the time in our communities. And I don't want to feel like I can't be around my own people. But that's where all the real threats to my life are coming from. By the way, I don't have any answers. I'm just doing my part the best way I know how. And the only thing I know to do right now is to encourage people, if they know Eric Holder's whereabouts, you know, uh, turn them in. You know, call 1-800-222-TIPS. Got to get people like this off the street because this man isn't going to do nothing but hurt someone else. So if he is still alive, which he's probably not, say something. And I know in L.A. y'all going to tear the streets up looking for this guy uh, or, or, or tear the streets up, you know, seeking revenge on his family and friends and people that know him, but just know, no matter how many people get shot, no matter how many people get killed, it's not going to bring Nipsey back. And we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Please give Eric Holder the biggest hee-haw. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not right about any of this. Uh. This, this, this. This hit a little bit different. And it really, really, really bothers me and has been weighing on my mind very heavily. All right. Because I don't have any answers as to what we are supposed to be doing. Well, let's let's open up the phone. Let's talk about it for a second. 800-585-1051. Now, we're always talking about keeping it real. All right. They say you come from the hood or you come from a low income area. You make it. People move out and they say, well, you never come back. They never come back to where they're from. Hmm. So let's talk about it. Do we keep it real or keep it alive? We hear hmm. about all the time about people dying in their own hometown, their own hood. Hmm. So many celebrities, or so many people don't even have to be celebrities. They, they make it out, they come back to do something. Come back to visit people. Come back to see their old homies, and then that's usually where they get hit up. But he also owned a store. Right, which is even worse, because right, yeah. he, he's, he's creating jobs in his own hometown. That's what I say, you know, we see this happen to our people all the time in our communities. And, you know, you don't want to feel like you can't be around your own people, but that's where all the real threats to your life seem to be coming from most of the time. All right. 800-585-1051. Keep it real or keep it alive. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Charlemagne the God here. Today's Donkey of the Day is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamonsoff. Don't be a donkey and call my friend Michael if you've been hurt in a construction accident. 212-962-1020. That's 212-962-1020. Don't be a donkey. 